Hello everyone, I want to show you what I've been doing recently and I have made a game for a company that's called Dash Apps and the game is called Lunar Orbit and it looks like this, let me show you so you play as an asteroid and your task is to hit the planet to start life on that planet and uh, your path is affected by other objects in the space like this planet its gravity field is adjusting your trajectory also there are other asteroids and black holes there can be more than one planet on your path as you can see the path can be really tricky Yeah, something like that and uh, for that game I had to create my own box 2d extension for the physics engine uh, because the one that is in default is uh, incapable of doing what I'm doing here uh, for instance here is this trajectory this is actually a physics simulation in its own little physics world that is separate from the main game and in that ge uh, and in that world I am computing the path that asteroid would take if I uh, launch it in this direction also I can nicely set up forces that are affecting the asteroid by other planets as you can see the curve in of the tra trajectory is really nice so yeah there here's the game and here's my default project for that game as you can see I'm using some amount of native extensions I have made uh, adjust Edmob, Amplitude, Crashlytics, Directories, Facebook, Mixpanel and you can find them on my github also here is a box to d extension and uh, uh, this is not available on my github but you can get it on my patreon because i recommend using my extension for any physics based games in default it works much better than with the defaults so uh, for the game I'm using my own scene manager, I'm not using Monarch here I have my uh, games scene and here's another scene for level select a small one just in a loop I'm creating a bunch of buttons uh, that will launch uh, a level that is written on that button here let me show you the main script is a script that is uh, launched first when the game is run as you can see here is just a bunch of initialization and let's change to another scene and run it here is a select level select uh, screen. I have a scroll view, a custom made, and a bunch of buttons for each level. And each level is divided into sub levels, and I can 
uh, transition to any of them. So here's, for example, level 24.3. And it looks like this. Let's change it back to game. And let me show you the main collection of the game. And it is actually empty. I am not a fan of building levels in the editor. Uh, it's not uh, convenient. Instead, I'm using tiled for levels and I'm exporting them to Lua. And it works really great. It's much more convenient and much more reliable to work with. But in the collection I have uh, lots of factories. And uh, there are basic factories like for label component, for a rectangle, and collection factories for more complicated stuff like images and sounds and scenes and spines. In the main object I have just the main script and that's all. That's all my uh, main collection file. All the images are added via a script, so I'm adding images to the projects and I have a script that converts all the images to game objects. So that is the first game. The next game is called Taxi Town. Let me show it. Both of them are created for the company Dash Apps. And Taxi Town took just a month to create. Here we go. A similar view for the game. Also just two scenes. The game scene, the level select scene, the main script, all pretty much the same, but the UI uh, is uh, more advanced here. Here is the game. It starts with a very blurry background that is intended. And uh, when you play, you have a car and the car is moving on the field and you have a limited amount of fuel and you need to pick up the passengers and drive them home and earn, and earn money. The levels also created in tiled. Oh, many gifts. And the cars are actually 3D models that are imported into default as Collada files. Here is a shop view with a bunch of cars that you can unlock or purchase. A tank, sports cars, Tesla. Here is the settings view. You have I have custom switch buttons. And each button is actually consists of two images. One is a tall one and the second is a shorter one to simulate the preset state. So and the UI is very 
adaptive. I can do pretty much any resize in it and it will be adjusted accordingly. Let me show you, for instance, let's rewrite and uh, open. Here is the settings view. Have it here. And uh, for instance, here is a class for the settings view. In the settings view, I am in this file just creating all the elements without giving them any coordinates on the screen. So here's my sound switch, here's my vibration switch, and the side view has uh, some base class that's uh, managing some uh, common elements like transitioning to and off the screen. Here's the no ads button, restore button, and uh, here's the really out function, which actually uh, goes on to uh, putting every element on the screen where it should be and uh, er, uh, sizing them properly. As you can see here, I am doing something strange. I am requiring a layouts class and invoking the settings function. So this is basically just uh, redirecting from this file to this file. And if I navigate to the settings view, layouting, here is the function that takes all the layouting for this screen. And uh, what's fun about it is that I can uh, edit it in real time without relaunching the game. For instance, here we have restore button, uh, no, let's have a no adds button uh, and it takes uh, three quarters of the screen width. We can change it to half hit R to reload resource via default and uh, it changes on the screen. I can have it one and I can change the position for instance, minus 125, save, reload, and it changes instantly. And it's all working. So this is how I'm doing UI in default. I find it very fast to develop uh, UI and uh, making it visual and adaptive at the, self at the same time. I can do all the kind of uh, calculations here to distribute uh, UI elements evenly on the screen uh, but for that game I'm using just uh, simple adjusting just for uh, keeping all the game content in this uh, letterbox area of the same aspect ratio no matter how I'm stretching the uh, the window. Another fe nice feature of the game is this blur functioning uh, at the background to uh, pop the uh, all these elements and div and separate them from the gameplay area. Uh, this is all done in uh, render script and applying a blur shader first horizontally then vertically and I'm getting a nice blur. Okay what else to show you in that game? Hmm. So levels all created in tiled as well and exported to Lua. Hmm.
in the data I have uh, just the prices of all cars. Yeah, that's about it. I hope you liked these games. Please install them and play them on your devices. They're quite fun. That's it.